Well, good morning, Southside. Special welcome as well to our guests. We are grateful to have you come and worship with us. <clears throat> I was glad our brother Nick was back in town and able to bring us the Word of God last Sunday. You here, brother? There he is. Welcome back. It was a joy that uh, God has called a gospel minister like that to Tijuana. It shows his love of that city. And so may we keep praying for him and his sweet family as they labor in that land for the name that is above every name, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wanted to remind you as well tonight about our Pi Fellowship. So a lot of the new members uh, who, who've been sharing and been in our newcomers class, they're going to be given testimonies, and I've been able to read most of them. And uh, you're just going to be encouraged with how God saves from every angle in a different way. And so I encourage you to come tonight, uh, bring some unbelievers. What a great time to hear of, of a God who saves. So I want to encourage you uh, with that. And we're going to have pie. So and the Nike group, I need you to come through. They, everything is made from scratch, and it's a beautiful trait. Um, I guess a sh quick confession. Every time we have a fellowship, I like to invite the Nike over because they make homemade potato salad. They do everything from scratch. And when I invite the millennials, they bring a bag of chips. <laughs> so it's called wisdom to invite anyone over 50. <clears throat> so this morning, we are going to jump back into Romans. If you'll turn to Romans chapter 8, it's just proven to be so rich already. We've only done the first four verses, really the first three and a half verses. And this is the whole Bible and just four verses. And so today we're going to begin looking at Romans 8, 4b through verse 8. I'd like to read that to you this morning. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is powerful. The gospel gives us the mind of Christ. It gives us a mind that is set on the Holy Spirit. And I hope to unfold what all that means this morning, or to at least try. By way of introduction, as I was studying this week, what kept coming to my mind is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. In Luke 8, Jesus and the disciples sail to the country of the Gerasenes, it's the opposite of Galilee. And there they meet a man from the city who's demon-possessed. And he had not put on any clothing, it said, for a long time. He's not living in a house, but in the tombs. And the demons have, had seized him, it said, many times. And he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard. And he would break its bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. And Jesus comes and he says, what's your name? And it says, Legion. And he commands these demons to come out. And they beg him, let us go into the swine uh, and not into the abyss. So Jesus sends them into the swine and the swine rush over the, the steep bank and down into the lake and they're drowned. The herdsmen then ran and reported what happened in the city and they all came up to see what had happened. And we're told that they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting down at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what we'll look at this morning is how this gospel clothes us in a righteousness not our own and puts us in our right minds. And to be in your right mind will always be at the feet of Jesus Christ. Salvation puts us in our right mind. Everyone else is out of their mind, so to speak. And that is what I see uh, in this church this morning are those who've been made in their right minds that give God, all the glory for the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. So let's pray and unfold what this passage would have for us this morning. Father, we come before you, and I thank you. Your Holy Spirit has inspired this word, and so yeah, we treasure it. We hold it as the word of God. And I pray this morning that your Spirit will, will teach us. He will teach us what does it mean to have the mind of the Spirit 
versus the mind of the flesh. God, I pray that um, these words would, would be illuminated this morning into minds and hearts and wills. God, I pray that you would do mighty things more than we could hope, ask, or believe even this morning in our midst. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. I want to just start maybe with considering what is Christianity? What, what is it to be a Christian? And it's not just to, to take up some teachings. It's not just a moral compass. It's not just a place you go on Sundays to have a community. It's, it's not a building. But the gospel that Paul is not ashamed of in Romans, the power of God for salvation. Good to see you, Brother James. Love you. Salvation from God's wrath because of sin. We, the wrath of God is on us because of sin. And the gospel saves us from that wrath, from our sin, all of it, our past sin, our present sin, and our future sin. So salvation is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it's rooted in Christ's work on this earth, what he came into this world and what he did and accomplished. And he joins us to Christ. The Holy Spirit joins us in a mystical union with Christ and all of his, all of his merits and what he has done is put to our account. He dies in our place. He lives in our place. It's all credited to us. So the gospel is being joined to Jesus Christ by his spirit and causing us to walk now in a whole new way according to his desires and his will out of a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know how the church has at lost that the gospel is a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit joins us to him and he becomes the fount of every blessing. A Christian is one who's indwelt by the spirit of Christ in Romans 8 and 9 that we will look at this morning. And so guys, we receive Christ and his spirit takes up residence within us and he manifests Christ to our soul. We have an encounter with the living Christ. We saw in Romans 7, a marriage with Christ. And if you have him, you are not according to the flesh any longer, but according to the spirit. And you now live in the spirit's realm and not in the realm of flesh like you did when you were an unbeliever. This is good stuff. And the way it's done, Romans 8, 1, that there's no condemnation now for those who are in Christ Jesus. The gospel removes all the condemnation for your sin. It says right now, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Romans 8, 2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. The bonds of sin and its dominion were broken. And the Holy Spirit has now set you free from the rule and reign of sin. And then Romans 8, 3, how? For what the law could not do, weak as it was to the flesh, God did, sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. The law could never get condemnation off of you. And Jesus Christ came and he bore God's condemnation for your sin. And it is now off. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus so that the requirement in verse 4 of the law might be fulfilled in us. And we looked at that the last time we were together in Romans, that this essence of the law is to love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And that is what God has always wanted from his created ones. And now in this gospel, we are able to fulfill that requirement. For the first time, we have been set free to love God and love other people. That's our blessed freedom. And so my question is, how do I fulfill the law's requirement? How do I love like God? How do I love others? Who can live like that? And the answer in our text is only those who walk according to the Spirit. Natural man will never be able to love this way. So before we dig into the text this morning, I just want to take a, a couple observations I want to make of this passage and hope that it will help us this morning. So first... The first observation is that we have two totally different classes of people in these verses. So we have an unbeliever and a believer. We have those who are according to the flesh and those who are according to the spirit. So it's really big that we understand this. This is going to be important to you. Romans 7, where we, we learn that the believer still has remaining sin. 
We still battle flesh. It's no longer reigning, but it's remaining. We're no longer in the flesh, but the flesh is still in us. Galatians 5, the spirit and the flesh are opposed to one another, so you may not do the things that you ought. That's called flesh. Every believer has it, and we are battling it. And that is, um, according to the flesh, it means to be under its rule or reign. And so what we're looking at this morning is not the believer's battle with sin. It's when you were completely dominated and controlled by your flesh when you were an unbeliever. That's what Paul's dealing with here. Not understanding that will throw you into an assurance spiral this morning. So I desire that you gain full assurance this morning if you're a believer in Christ. I'm praying for that. And you will see what is it to be according to the flesh and what is it to be according to to the Spirit. Well, if you just flip back over to Romans 7, 5, this is what it means to be according to the flesh. Paul already told us, for while we were in the flesh or according to the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the members of our body to bear the fruit for death. Law came, flesh was stirred. What does it mean to be in the Spirit? Verse 6, but now We've been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, so that now we serve in the newness of the Spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. And so now we have new hearts with the Holy Spirit, giving us desires for righteousness and holiness from within that work to without. That's what it means to be according to the flesh and to be according to the Spirit. So... This is two different kinds of people. Uh, Romans 8, 2, it's those who are under the, the law of sin and death and those who are under the spirit of life. Secondly, <clears throat> there are no commands in this passage. That will come in verse 12 and 13 where we're going to be called to put to death our remaining flesh. But these are all what are called indicatives. These are all realities that are true. They are axiomatic truths. So you're either in one or the other. You are either by natural birth minded of the flesh or by a supernatural birth, you are minded of the spirit. There's no in between. There's no halves. It's one or the other in, in this text. So let's take a look at Paul's argument. I just want you to consider it and then we'll open up the text. First, this section is explaining those who can keep the requirement of the law. So come back to verse 4. We're able to keep the requirement of the law now to love. And the way you can do it is by the Holy Spirit. Second, the way we will walk in the Spirit, he says, is not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Thirdly, this kind of a walk that we're going to have by the Spirit is because of a certain mindset. So you walk in the Spirit, fulfill the law of love, but it's the mindset. What are our minds set on? That, that mindset is what produces the kind of walk that will love other people and God. And so your mindset is going to dictate how you live and how you walk. And then fourth, the reason that this mindset produces this kind of a walk is because it produces life and peace. Flesh, we'll see it produces death. The Spirit makes you alive to God and gives you peace. And then fifthly, we can never fulfill the law's requirement when we're according to the flesh. We've looked at that many times. We'll just glance at it this morning. And sixthly, we can fulfill the law's requirement now according to the Spirit. So I want you to see that every believer has the Holy Spirit, and that's how you're going to fulfill the requirement of the law, to love like no other, and to love God and love His people and love the lost and care. So this is what will come out of believers because of the Holy Spirit of God who dwells within us. So let's take a look then at verse 4. That the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So those who do not walk. Your walk is a description of, of your general way of living. So when you hear your walk, just think of your life, your, your conduct. The words used to describe your basic tenor of life. It, it's what governs uh, you. It controls you. It gives you affections. It's your way of living. Ephesians 2.1, you are dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world. Ephesians 5.2, walk in love. Ephesians 5.15, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. So your walk is going to be your day-to-day -day life, the characteristic of how you live. 
So do be those who do not walk according to the flesh. Sarx is the Greek word. And it has many meanings. It can just mean your skin. It can mean weakness. It can just mean to be human. But in this context, it, it refers to sinful flesh. To be apart from the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. It's to be born in Adam, what you were as an unbeliever. In our context, it says you have an inability to submit to God. So in your flesh, you would never, ever submit to God. It's your act of rebellion against God. It's one who's given over to the world minus God. So you just live for the scene and what's here. That, that's my, according to the flesh, that I live as if there's no God. I just live in this world, like Solomon said, under the sun, chasing after life as if there is no God. That's what Sarx is. That's what flesh is. And so we're those, Paul says, who do not walk according to the flesh. The flesh is your, your lamp, your lead faculty. John Murray, the commentator, said, the flesh is your human nature as corrupted, directed, and controlled by sin. To walk according to the flesh is to have the things of the flesh as the absorbing objects of thought, interest, affection, and purpose. I'm going to repeat that. It's your absorbing objects of what you think about, what your interests are, what you desire, and what you purpose. You're according to the flesh. But what he says now is you, believer, walk according to the Spirit. You walk now directed and controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. The flesh is no longer the lead faculty anymore of your life, but the Spirit of God now is. And now we have the Spirit of God, I want you to hear this, dwelling within us. He's at work in us, causing us both to will and to do His good pleasure. He's working in us holiness from the inside to the out. And when our flesh was just working in us wretchedness, we saw in Romans 6, it just kept defiling us. This is sanctifying us and changing us. So how does this happen? How does this happen? How do we go from being according to the Spirit to according to the flesh? This is why Christ said you must be born again, Nicodemus. You must be made over again. God makes us alive spiritually. He gives us his own spirit to lead and guide and direct us and to make us holy, to cause us to fulfill the law's requirements to love. And so get this, the spirit comes and he moves on us and he gives us a mindset now. And this mindset will cause us to love God and other people. Now I'm going to be a man who loves Christ. I love his church, which is his people. I love the lost. I sacrifice for others. I spread the gospel. This, this mindset will change everything about you. We just love the world in a whole new way. Before, according to flesh, I just used the world. How can I get it? How can I drink it up? What can it do for me? And now I just want to be a do-gooder. I want to go and do men good as Jesus Christ did. So one, according to the flesh, I use this world. And now I serve it because I have the mindset of the Spirit of Christ, as Robert read in 1 Corinthians 2. And so now Paul is going to flush this out. And in this section, Paul is going to tell us there are only two kinds of people in this world. First, there's a non-Christian, and, and that's going to be those according to the flesh, and then there's a Christian according to the Spirit. So let's flush this out together. Those who are according to the flesh in verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh, what do they do? They set their minds on the things of the flesh. So according to the flesh is your human nature before the Holy Spirit does anything in you. Man without the Spirit of God. So the, the, the preposition here in the Greek is kata, and it means to be under the flesh or to be dominated by it. So this is the, the you know, those who are, it's, it's what I am, my very essence my very being was to be controlled and dominated by my flesh. And someone like that sets their minds on the things of the flesh. This is in the present tense. So this is now someone, your whole pattern, your whole lifestyle. If I had to describe you, it's just all you live for is the flesh. That's what dominates. That's what controls you. It's all you are is a kata sarks, according to the flesh. This word here for, for your minds, your minds are on that. It's used 23 times in the New Testament. 
This word, it's, it's not, a, I think it's a bad translation to just think mind. It's rather the deliberate setting of your mind on something. It's what you're minded on. This word is you do it volitionally. It's what you choose. It's what you want. It, it includes emotions and desires and affections. It's a very comprehensive term. And it's what you find satisfaction in. It's, it's what you go after. <clears throat> what are you devoted to? It's, it's your whole existence. If I had to give it a summary statement, it's the things that you think most about. It's what pleases you most. It's what gives you your greatest satisfaction. And it's what floats your boat. I guess I would say it this way. It's what determines the course of your life is, is the scene. And this is hard examination this morning. What drives you? Kata Sarks or the Spirit? It's looking at life through the lens of flesh. It's thinking the scene is it. It's, it's Solomon, life under the sun. So he's therefore the one who's focused only on what will satisfy his flesh, not spiritual. The spiritual is absent from this mindset. All of our hopes, and aspirations and desires and ambitions are locked into the scene. It doesn't go to the spiritual. It's everything is here and now. Christianity in America. It's the scene. It's, it's what will make me happy right now. And I'll even use religion for what it can give me right now. It's eat, drink, and be merry. It's you, you spend and be spent for your flesh. Weary yourself and how to get more for your flesh and time and just sarks. That's all it is. I live for that. Rather than spend and be spent for the kingdom of God, which is when you're according to the Spirit. So what's this going to look like, Pastor? Uh, I don't know if I got it right sending you guys verses. I got some verses I just wanted to throw up. So uh, we're going to start with 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4. And I, I just want to help you. What does this look like? If you're according to the flesh. 1 Corinthians 3 1. And I, brethren, Paul, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of sarks, as to babes in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you're not yet able, but you're still fleshly. For since there's, what is it going to look like if you're fleshly? Well, there's jealousy and strife among you. Are you not fleshly and are you not walking like mere men? Some of that, that describes your last year of life. Jealousy and strife. One says, I'm of Paul. Another says, I'm of Apollos. Are you not mere men? You're, you're people pleasers. You're, you're wanting the approval of this world. You're according to the flesh. I just want the world to love me, stroke me. I, I want to be applauded. I, I want to be in the who's in and the in crowd. And that drives everything that I am. That's, that's my, my flesh according to it. Probably even a better verse, Galatians 5.15, if you'll look with me. But if you bite and devour one another, flesh consumes flesh. <laughs> and you just bite and devour one another. Take care lest you be consumed by one another. But I say walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. And this is that remaining flesh. For what does flesh do? It sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please." But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law, which is everything we've been learning in Romans. And now the deeds of the flesh are evident. What will happen when flesh is controlling? Well, it, they'll be evident. There'll be immorality, impurity, sensuality. It, it, it's the, the sin of our time. And it will just devour, and, and it just takes others and uses them. Idolatry, it will, it will worship other things instead of God. Sorcery, enmity, strife, and jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, envying, drunkenness, uh, good time partiers, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who are according to the flesh and live this way, he's saying it's a mindset and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
1 John 2.15, John the apostle of love, do not agape the world. Don't have a self-sacrificing love for this world. What are we learning? We can fulfill the law. We have an agape for God and for others. According to the flesh is I have agape for this world. I will deny and sacrifice anything to have more of this world. Don't love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. That is what will characterize according to the flesh. Philippians 3.19, Paul says, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, their desires are what drive them and control them for flesh, whose glory and their shame and they set their minds on earthly things. We just set our minds on earthly things. We are taken up with the temporal, the here and now, our own thoughts. We walk by sight. I don't look beyond this day except when it will bring pleasure and security in the future. That is the only reason I will deny my flesh now is so I can have more of it later. I don't consider it an eternal judgment day. I'm consumed with consumables. On this earth, this earth is what captivates. I mean, we're like ostriches and we stick our heads in this world and not the world to come. Jesus said the Gentiles eagerly seek food, clothing, and shelter, what to wear and eat and dress, but we're those who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says in the end days, the people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That uh, maybe even a better illustration is Nemo. There were these seagulls, and these little seagulls, I'll never forget it. Mine, 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 mine. That's according to the flesh. Matthew 6, all you care about is what man sees, even in your, when you come to religion, it's according to the flesh. And I just want people to notice me and see me. But the, 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 the one who's according to the Spirit comes into the secret place and just wants God to see and to know them and to fellowship and commune. The great burden of my soul is how many in our land have just added Jesus to a mindset on the flesh. To use him for how he can give them more flesh. It's called the prosperity gospel. And maybe more subtly, as maybe some sitting here this morning, You've added Jesus to a part of your life while you're drinking up the American dream. You just indulge your flesh daily and drink this world up and you give Jesus a couple crumbs. Those are the ones that I've been begging God to set you free this morning. The Spirit would rip open your hearts and show you that you're still according to the flesh with just a little Jesus added onto the top. There's a gospel for you. There's a gospel that can take you out from that and make you according to the Spirit. I think the most miserable place is to be according to the flesh and try to just keep a bunch of general commandments and not go to hell. I think that's the worst place you could live. And I'm offering you something way better this morning. Well, why does this matter so much, Pastor? Well, in verse 6, Paul says the mindset on the flesh is, is death. So does the, does the mindset on the flesh lead to death? Yes. But in this context, it is death. The mindset on the flesh is death. You're already dead spiritually. It's not a spiritual consequence, but an equation. Because they're dead, their mind is set on the flesh. A dead corpse just it will live according to the flesh. So even though his body and his mind are, are alive and active, they're just dead spiritually. And so we all come into the world, I've said this before, spiritual stillborns, dead to spiritual things. What Robert read, the natural man cannot comprehend the spiritual things of God. They're foolishness to him. You're dead to the things of God. And it's why you can read your Bible, come to church, study, learn doctrine, and Jesus just be another man in history who did some great things. You're dead to God. Because you're according to the flesh. And that's all that matters to you is flesh. Pastor, stop. Take your foot off the gas. 
I came to be encouraged this morning. Well, guess what? I got two more verses of pushing the gas. Verse 7. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. It's not even able to do so. So if you're according to the flesh, the mindset on the flesh, I want you to hear this. How do I know if I'm according to the flesh? You're hostile to God. No, I love God. It's an interesting word. It means enmity. And it refers to hatred as an inner disposition and an, an objective opposition. This mindset on the flesh makes you an enemy of God. Uh, James said, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world, according to the flesh, is hostility toward God? Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You can't be according to the flesh and, and be friends with God. There's, there's enmity between you and God. And Paul says it does not subject itself to the law of God. It's not even able to do so. God has enmity toward us because we're lawbreakers. And we have enmity toward God because we love our flesh. We're not according to the Spirit. God's telling us about eternal things and how to submit to Him and follow Him. And flesh says, no way. I'm here for myself. I'm here for my own desires, my own thoughts. What will make me happy? God, I don't want that. It makes sense that there's no natural ability to obey God or come to Him or to love Him unless you are born again by the Spirit of God. There is no other way to come out from this predicament. If you're here this morning trying to get out by a little church and changing your life, you can never come out from this condition but the Holy Spirit of God bringing you to Jesus and showing you what He has done to set the captives free and to deliver you from being according to the flesh. That what the law could not do, God did by sending his son and condemning him in the flesh. And he can bring you out of that realm and bring you into the realm of the spirit. So do you see why when the law came, it just aroused sin more? It was spiritual. And we live for the here and now, and we had no motivation. And the law is saying, you can't have it all here and now. You got to deny yourself. And it just stirred it up. People of the flesh don't love a spiritual law. Even if you dress it up like the Pharisees, you only clean the outside and the inside is dirty. And you can sit here every Sunday and look so good, but you can't change the inside. You still look to self instead of to God. And there's a gospel that looks only to God. And those who are in the flesh, Paul says, cannot please God. I want you to hear that. When you are unsaved according to the flesh, you will never be able to please God. Everything you do will always come from a selfish heart. It will never spring from a fountain of love to God and love to others. You will never be able to get that requirement of the law that we looked at two weeks ago. You're you're just, you're mean, you're nasty, you're judgmental, you're critical, and you just put all the externals on and you're just the Grinch on the inside. Mean. And you can't change it. The law, will you'll never be able to please God with that heart. He is not smiling because you have a MacArthur study Bible this morning and you hate people in your heart. I need the Spirit to change this heart. I will never be able to please God in that condition. I want you to get that so that you could have the second part. Before we go on, maybe, I want you to see why salvation can only come from God. I want you to worship God this morning because there was a stalemate between you and God and you were going to lose. We would rather have burned in hell forever than love God and surrender to Him. But what the law could not do, I want you to hear it one more time, God did. And he sent his son to deliver you from this place. So I want you to catch this. The love that God requires of you can only come from what Christ has done for you. And he came in this world and he hung on a cross and he died in your place and he lived a life and obeyed the law. He loved God with his heart, mind, soul, and strength and his neighbor as himself. That's the only way you can be set free is through that. And secondly, by what the spirit does within you. 
That's what Christ did outside and then what he does within you. And that's what we're going to close out with. Those who are according to the Spirit, this is the Christian. Our second point. These ones set their mind on the things of the Spirit, which are the things of God. This is what we call a whole new world in life view. God opens your eyes, and now you can see and you can understand and perceive spiritual things. Jesus is now a treasure hidden in a field. He's not the little Sunday school thing I heard about my whole life. He's the one now that I will, I will lose everything for. That's what happens when the Spirit comes and shows you Christ. How do I know if this happened to me? Because it's like you've been altogether born again. The things I used to hate, I now love, and the things I used to love, I now hate. Everything that I think or do, tonight you're going to come here like 16 testimonies of how God did that in hearts. Everything that I think or do has a spiritual end because I've been made alive in Christ. It's for God. Our life is now under the rule and reign of the Spirit of God, not the flesh. Our minds, our intellect, our emotions, our desires, and our feelings are now the things of the Holy Spirit of God. We're now captivated on the revealed things in this word and the promised things in this word. That's what floats my boat now, is that Jesus is coming again for his bride. He's going to establish eternal righteousness. This is now the matter that is our greatest concern. This is the one who's spiritually minded. He seeks the face of God in prayer. He seeks Christ in his word. Obedience is the mindset, the requirement of the law can be fulfilled in us. I just can't get over God's love and I want to love him and I want to love others. It just flows and it comes out of me organically. His concern is his eternal souls and other souls. It's, it just, it's not hobbies and entertainments and houses anymore. It's the eternal things. That's my greatest interest. I give myself to it. His pursuit of God now means all to him. It's second to none. If I have to give up everything, I, I will now. It's a treasure hidden in a field. Paul said, all these things, all the religious things that I thought were earning me favor with God, now with a spiritual mind, I count them manure. My only hope is Christ. And what's more, I count all things lost compared to the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I no longer look at my religious morality and goodness. It's trash. It's dung. And I look at this whole world and say, it can't compare to Jesus Christ. That's what the Spirit does in a soul. Wake up. We are alive to God. That's what the Spirit does. He makes you alive to God. Whitfield had said of him, he just was so alive. We're alive to this God. I'm tired of corpses wrapped around good doctrine. Because that doctrine made you alive to God in Christ Jesus. What a blessed transaction to go from being according to flesh to being according to the Holy Spirit of God. And I want you to hear this. It's not perfect. There will be seasons where the flesh will be lured back into fleshly thinking, to think fleshly thoughts. There'll be temptations, and there'll be struggles, and there'll be sins, and wanderings, and doubts, and fears. But the one who's made alive to God will always repent, and he'll be led back into communion with God and faith in Christ. Because we are led by the Spirit of God, He will always lead us back. We now have the power of God working within us for sanctification to make us holy. And Paul prayed, oh, what is, I pray that you guys would know what is the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe. I pray that we could get the power that dwells within us to sanctify us and grow us and change us. And verse 6, this mindset brings life and peace. We're joined to Christ again by the Spirit and we get life, spiritual life. The manna that came down from heaven would give life to all who ate. Jesus said in John 17, this is eternal life, that you may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Life. John 10.10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you might have life 
and you might have it abundantly. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And in Romans six eleven, you have been made alive to God. And this is an equation. It's not that the, that the Spirit it, it brings eternal life. We're going to look at that next week. But Christ is the bread of life right now, no longer this world. Do you want to suck on the husk of this world or eat the bread from heaven, Jesus Christ? And it brings peace. Why peace? Because this is how the righteousness of the law can be fulfilled in us. And in Romans 8, 7 through 8, it was the enmity. It was enmity between us and, and God. And the opposite of enmity is peace. And now what we have in the Spirit is peace with God. Reconciliation. The, I have peace with the living God. God's enmity was poured out on Christ. And our enmity dissipated at the cross of Christ when the Spirit showed us and revealed that to us. The love of God in Christ Jesus melted us, and now we are able to please God and to obey Him by loving. John said, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. If you're alive to God, your greatest joy is to obey God. If you're, if you're still according to the flesh, you know what your greatest burden is? <laughs> to obey God. It's just a burden, and it's just a grind, and it's miserable. But those who are according to the Spirit, it is your great joy to follow the King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's close out. A couple thoughts of application. I want to go back to the demoniac. The demoniac just sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. The right mindset is found in the right man. The right mindset finds itself looking to Christ. He's the one. That's, to be in your right mind is to love Christ, believe in Him, trust Him, and hope in Him. That's to be right-minded, and that's where the Spirit leads us. This is where we get the mind of Christ from Christ. Come to Him this morning and be seated at the feet of Jesus in your right mind with Him as your treasure and your chief end. Are you just done with a world that's just, it leaves you empty, broken, and just, you keep chasing it like a dog chasing its tail, and it just, it produces nothing. Are you done with that this morning? Do you want to have the right mind? Look to Jesus Christ hanging on a cross for every sin that you've committed, and let it just melt your heart. You can have every sin forgiven this morning, and you can be in your right mind. I have a Savior. I love Him. I give my life to him, I could be right-minded this morning instead of chasing this world, trying to find satisfaction in life and happiness and just keep drowning and dying in it. I offer to you life this morning. Secondly, do you see why there's no way to keep the law if you're according to the flesh? An unbeliever will never be able to love from the heart God and others. You will always love this world and what it can do for your flesh. There's no hope in it. So are you still, number three, according to the flesh? Is that still um, your present tense verb? That that's just what you are? That's your life? That's all you think about? Fourthly, don't mistake the battle with the flesh as being according to the flesh. And what I'm going to tell you this morning is that if you battle flesh, that's the sign that you're according to the Spirit. And the Spirit, it says that they're opposed to each other. So when you're made alive, your spirit, the Spirit within you now fights flesh. It fights it. It's opposed. There's a battle. So the fact that you're battling flesh and, and thinking according to the flesh is the sign of life. Number five, I want you to worship God for making you according to the Spirit. He gave you a new birth with new desires and new goals and a new focus in life and peace. It does crazy things, doesn't it? It takes a, a, a friend of mine who um, had a fear of cancer and now she's sitting with chemo dripping in her veins and her hair falling out and her just worshiping in this bright light and telling everyone about Jesus and every day, how are you doing? I'm full of joy. How does that happen? 
according to the Spirit. Her hope is Him. He's sufficient. He's enough. Whatever God does, He's, he's my life. Guys, this, this does stuff to you. And number six, I want you to go keep the requirements of the law this week, the law of Christ. That we now, as we walk in the Spirit, can do that. And so, just in closing, I want you to get this then. The Holy Spirit, um, he, he, he comes and He convicts of sin and judgment and righteousness and shows you your, your, your sin is going to condemn you and your righteousness is a filthy rag and Christ is the only one and you should be judged. And now he, he reveals Christ to you and you realize He's a comfort. He can comfort me in all of my sin and transgressions and all that I've done. And, and the Spirit gives you, he, he regenerates you and you believe in Jesus. And when you believe, you're joined, the Holy Spirit joins you to Christ and everything that Christ has done and is, is now yours. And you're in this vine and branch relationship with Christ. And so now you're justified. You're, you're a child of God. Your sins are forgiven. You're accepted. And that, that just changes your whole mindset. You're no longer according to flesh. You can see. And you see the things of God and what he's done and what he's done in the gospel and what life's about. And now I'm, I'm going to walk according to the Spirit. So to walk is to be in agreement. I'm in agreement that Christ is everything. That's what the Spirit's told me. And I, I walk in that and I'm, I'm, we're, just, we're walking together. We're in fellowship and he's pointing me to Christ and showing me how to love God and love others. And then when I sin, I, I break that communion. And then I don't break the union, I break the communion. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And so right away, I'm gonna, I'm gonna own it and confess it to God and be back to walking in the Spirit. And then and the Spirit's going to be leading and guiding me and helping me fight flesh and fleshly thoughts. And so I, I want us to, to be a church that's according to the Spirit. And we walk by the Spirit and He empowers us and He gives us desires and love for Christ. And, and we stay in that. And, and, and when we get off, we, we repent and confess and restore that fellowship with God because the, the power of loving God and loving others is by communion with God. It's by our relationship that we have been joined to Jesus Christ and I am now according to the Spirit. So I pray that we would love like no one else in this world and all men would know we're his disciples by our love for one another. I pray. Father, I thank you for this glorious passage. And I pray if there are any this morning who are according to the flesh, God, that your word by your spirit has called them out and they're sitting here and they're broken. I pray now, Holy Spirit, comfort them with Christ. Don't comfort them with just running out of this room. Don't comfort them with beer. Don't comfort them with a TV. God, I pray comfort them with Jesus Christ alone. Don't let them run to anything else. Let them run to this healer. This one who, though their sins were as scarlet, they could be made as white as snow this morning. God, I pray, let, let all in this room be according to the Spirit. God bless all. I pray for every child of God. Teach us. Teach us. Lead us by your Spirit. Let us walk according to the Spirit and love you and love others like no human being, natural being could ever do. God, give us this supernatural love by your Spirit. Let it be the fruit of the Spirit that we would be filled with love. God, I thank you for this. And it's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen.